I have multiple workbooks here in Excel, many different files, and the data that I need are all separate from each other. And I need to use here my summary workbook to, let's say, summarize the data and bring the information that I need using those different Excel files. In this example right here, I'm going to use the SUMIF function to help me make an addition of just the things that I need to add up using a criteria, okay? It's basically a connection between those files. But uh, this connection has the purpose of being used as the function data. So within the SUMIF function that I have here in the summary, I want to use as the data, the information that I have in those other workbooks. But let's see how can we connect all those different multiple Excel files in just one, step by step and from scratch. And before we get started, something very important to say is there is many, many different solutions to this problem. I'm doing here a simple one that is using functions and formulas. But you can also use, let's say, Power Query to help you. This maybe is a very fast way to solve this with simple solutions. Okay, so let's go. I have three different Excel files. My main one is the product list. And then I have two more workbooks, the sales 01 and the sales 02. I want to use all those different informations there are in the sales 01 and 02 in my product list. So let me open here this first workbook that I have. And within the first workbook, I have information such as the product name, uh, 2024 year, and the total quantity and total sold. And uh, again, but at uh, this time for the 2025, the quantity sold and the total sold. Basically, we have a summary of the informations that I have on the, those different workbooks, when it, sales 01 and sales 02, or, or 2024 and 2025. Because so I want to fill in here with the correct information, the total sold and uh, the quantity sold for each one of the different products that I have. Maybe I can use here uh, a XLOOKUP function, a VLOOKUP, or a SUM IF function to help me add up all those values that corresponding to each one of the products and each one of the years. But the problem is, to be able to do this calculation here in Excel, I need data. And uh, my data is on those two previous workbooks. So let me open here those two workbooks. Here in the left, I have the sales of 2024. And here to the right, I have the sales of 2025. And I need, I need to use both of the informations in my summary. And as you can see here, I have the date, the quantity, the price, and the item. Basically, I have the same information uh, in, the, in both workbooks, but uh, of course, with different data. And I need to use maybe the sum if function to bring all those values and put in the summary. I want to use here the equal sign, the sum if function to help me. One, two, to select. Why am I using the sum if function and not just the sum function? Because the sum function is going to make an addition. It's going to add up all the values that I selected in a range. If I want to use a criteria such as the product name, I need to use the sum if function to add up not all those values, but just the value that match with my criteria. So let's go here, sum if function. The first argument that I have is the range. And the range that I want to use is in my 2024 sales spreadsheet. So let me open again that spreadsheet. Okay, so... As the, the range, I want to select the column D because it's the column D where I have the items, the criteria. Click here and then comma. Now the summary function is asking me the criteria. And the criteria is in the summary workbook. Basically the product that I have here to the left, comma. Now the sum range. The sum range again is in the 2024 sales workbook. So I need to open it again. Let me select here the column that I want to make an addition of the values. That is the column B like this. Now we can simply press enter and I'm going to have here the correct result. The addition of all the values that match with my product for the 2024 year. So this is basically how we can use formulas and functions in Excel using data from another workbook, another Excel file. I can even click here in the in this first function that I have, the down right corner of the cell, click hold and drag down to make sure all the rows contain now the same formula or function. And we're done with the first quest that we had. Now, the second one is the total sold. And to do the total sold, is basically the same thing as before. I can use equal sign and then the sum if, double click here, one, two, to select. As a range, I need to open the 2024 sales report that is here. And then I need to select the column D, trauma as my criteria. I need to go back to the summary workbook and select the criteria, trauma, and then go back to the sum range that is in the 2024 sales report and select the column where I want to add up the values. That is the column C. And then just press enter. Here we got the result. Let me click hold and drag down this function like this. Now the 2024 is done and uh, we can move on to the 2025. But I think maybe there's no necessity to do all over again to the 2025 because it's the same process. But the thing that I want to show here is, and if I close the spreadsheet, the workbook, the 2024 workbook, will the functions continue to work or are they gonna crash? So let's, let's find it out. I'm gonna close here the 2024 
uh, report or the sales 01. Let me close here. And as we can see here, everything is working. But if I, let's say, update the spreadsheet, it's going to continue to work. Let me double click in any cell, one, two, and then I'm going to press enter. As you can see, we got an arrow here. Whenever we update anything that is related to the function, such as the criteria or such as the function itself, if I click here in any of those cells that I have where I did the formula, the function, as you can see, I have the, the path of the file. So users, JP, desktop, and then the name of the, the folder, and then here the name of the Excel file, and then the specific cell. But as we could see, we lost the connection between the function and the file. So one solution in this scenario, of course, we can use Power Query to help us or another alternatives. But if you want to stick with a simple solution, that is formulas and functions in Excel, you can do this following solution right here. So let me open again the file that I closed before. Now with the file open, if I just minimize the file, as you can see, the formulas now are working properly. Everything is working. So how can I prevent the error to occur here in Excel? Something that you can do is just select all those cells where you have the functions and then Control C to cope everything and then right click and go to the paste. But after the second option, values, click here. And instead of having a formula or a function now, you have just the value itself, just the result. But let's say with this solution, you cannot update the data. Let's say someone just changed a couple of informations in the in the another workbook that you are using to connect the data, and you always want to keep this summary updated. How can you do it? My suggestion is instead of Control C, Control V, with everything like I did, let me press here Control Z to undo the action, and now we have the functions again. Let me select the first two cells, Control C to call, and then in a cell here underneath. Control V to paste. Now we can save the function or the formula that we did in a cell that we are not going to use. Then we can go back and select everything, Control C, right click, and then go to the second option, paste values. That way we can prevent the errors to occur or appear here in the, in the summary spreadsheet because now instead of having functions, we have just the result itself. But anyway, we also have here the function that we did before. So if you want to change something or if you want to apply again this function to all those previous cells, you basically need to select both of those cells, Control C, select everything that you have here above and then Control V. Now we have the functions again. I think it's a good solution to use instead of using Power Carry or other tools that Excel have. If you want to make it simple, you can stick with formulas and functions doing this solution or this method that I show you here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or if you have a doubt in a different subject, let me know, comment down below. And I see you tomorrow because every day has a new video.